Hope you're full of energy this morning. So we're going to talk about reinventing buildings in a digital world. As we know, we have a lot of new technologies with digital to transform our infrastructure and our buildings. And we're going to take the next 40 minutes to talk about that. I am Laurent Bataille. I am the Executive Vice President of the Digital Energy Business of Schneider Electric, amongst other things in charge of digital buildings, which is the business where we are transforming buildings. And today, I'm actually going to be on stage also with Gert Wilmink from CBRE, who is going to share his experience in a few minutes. When we have a look at the world today, we see that our cities and our buildings are under a lot of constraints. There's a number of trends that are impacting the way we need to design them and handle our scarce resources. The first one is urbanization. In the next 30 years, we're going to have 2.5 billion people moving to cities. Think about how it's going to put pressure on resources like space and how we design buildings. Second very important trend is digitization. Between 2014 and 2020, the number of connected products in building is being multiplied by three, and it's just the beginning of IoT. So you might say our buildings are more equipped with smart capabilities, smart sensors, but what are we going to do with that data? How are we going to leverage it? Then there's the question of energy. 60% of the electricity worldwide is used in buildings. And given the urbanization, we're going to need between 60% and two times more energy in the coming 25 years. How do we handle that in a time of climate change? To do that, we need better buildings. We need buildings who are more efficient, that are more people-centric, and that are also safe and reliable. And today, when we have a look at the existing buildings, they're failing to deliver appropriately on this criteria. Just have a look at efficiency. You know, there's a lot of energy that is actually wasted in today's buildings. For HVAC, for instance, which are the biggest loads in buildings, but there's actually a lot of labor wasted in buildings with maintenance that is still very traditional, you know, a lot of reactive work. There's also a lot of space that is wasted. So we really need to tap into this opportunity and design buildings very, very differently. When it comes to people challenges in buildings, buildings are becoming critical assets for companies. If you have a look at the younger generation entering the workforce, their environment, their work environment, is one of the top three criteria to decide to work for a company. Are our buildings appropriately catering to their expectations? Then there's all the question about the health of our buildings and the impact of our environment on our health. We're discussing with Harvard University and their research team is showing that buildings and the indoor environment is where we spend 85 to 90 percent of our lifetime. They're saying when we have a look at the impact of air quality on your health, your facility manager may have more impact long term on your health than your doctor. Okay, and are we happy with how it delivers for us today? Then we move to safety and reliability changes. You might say this is pretty basic, but the reality today is we have critical infrastructure that don't deliver on that. There's not a month without a big power shutdown in some critical infrastructure. Think about airports, uh, railroad stations, amusement parks. I mean, there's a lot of stories where today our buildings are not reliable. What is at the core of the issue, an underlying phenomenon that explains why buildings don't deliver for us the way they should? It's a data problem. 
Our buildings today are designed in a very traditional manner with siloed systems. The data is not flowing across systems. It's prisoner with proprietary protocols, old systems, and because of that, a lot of facility managers and building users don't have visibility to what's going on. If you don't have visibility to what's going on, how can you tap into all the waste and the opportunity gaps we've talked about? So we need to tackle this issue and put in place a number of guidelines for how buildings should be designed in the future. I mean, the first one is it's about gathering and capturing the data. You need what I would call data highways, uh, where you can actually gather all of that through sensors, but then make sure it flows through a high-speed network, typically IP-based. So that's really very important. The second important thing is you need to create communication across systems, bridges across your elevator management system, your HVAC management system, your lighting systems, integration. And I would say with software, we have the capability to create these bridges if it's well thought through. And then once we have the data, thanks to this communication highway and these bridges, we need to make sure the data is contextualized and can be leveraged thanks to AI and analytics. If we do all that well, we're going to create a lot of insight that is actionable so that we can really transform the experience we have in buildings. Now, when we have a look at the situation today, and many people know about these guidelines, the reality, though, is many of the modern buildings, like the one you see on the left, come with a digital infrastructure that is still designed in an old manner. Twisted pair systems, proprietary protocols, siloed, non-integrated digital architecture. So the buildings might look nice, but the reality is as of today, they're already obsolete. That's the difference with the building you see on the right, which has been thought through for being evolutive on the digital side. And I think today, it's really a wake-up call in our industry. We know what we have to do, but I don't think we do it at mass scale. So that's really an adoption challenge that we need as an industry in real estate to take together. Because actually, if we do the right thing, on the digital infrastructure within buildings, we can deliver great outcomes. What is the value expected by our customers, real estate users or facility managers? One of the big new value and expectation is more engaging buildings. People want better places to live in, work in. That's the reality. You have a look again at the young generation, the millennials. Their expectations are very different from the past. So this theme of more engaging buildings is one of the most important that is arising right now. The second one is what we call hyper-efficiency. Your know, buildings, for many of them, are relatively efficient and they're already automated. But we can get to the next level. With AI, analytics, and cloud technology, we can really raise the bar in terms of efficiency. Third theme is sustainability. You remember Jean-Pascal yesterday talking about the energy challenge. We are going to all have a mandate to make our buildings more sustainable. And finally, if we want to scale, we are going to have to make sure the new technology is easy and simple to implement. Okay, no barriers to mass adoption. So let me start with more engaging buildings. What is this notion of engaging places? It covers a number of parameters. The first one is comfort and well-being. You might say this is the base, but it's a very important base. Today in buildings, the first source of complaint is still about temperature management. 
you have real issues with, again, health and air quality. But the reality is with modern technology, we can fundamentally transform that. Okay? We know, for instance, that by deploying cloud-based offers on an existing automation system, we can cut complaints linked to discomfort by more than 80%. So we can really transform the experience in buildings. We also know if we start measuring CO2 rates, we can increase ventilation and fundamentally, again, help the building users with a better productivity and actually better cognitive capabilities. There are studies showing that with better air quality, we work much better, especially when it comes to strategic decision making. And then we can actually go to a more productive workplace. When you give people, you know, for instance, a mobile app that is actually gathering a lot of different workflows and giving them the information real time on, on parking spots available in the garage, on you know, the queue at the restaurant, on where to find the right meeting room, how to book it, etc. We have actually deployed some of these systems in very large buildings, like for instance in France for a bank, 75,000 square meter buildings, 5,000 employees. And the HR department is measuring that the average employee is actually saving more than 20 hours per year of productive time. So again, with digital, we can give people and pouring tools so that they become more productive and happier, more satisfied with their work environment. Now, when it comes to hyper-efficiency, I'd like to talk about a few topics. Space. You've seen the space that is wasted in buildings. Now, the reality is with sensors, you can measure pretty accurately the space occupancy. And then with new offers to make workspace more flexible, you know, from real estate players, you can actually save 15% or 20% of space easily in existing buildings. Now we can talk about energy. McKinsey is actually saying that 80% of the energy savings linked to automation in buildings, which is called active energy management, is still up for grab. I, the vast majority of buildings are not equipped today. But now I take the case of a building that is already equipped with automation. And with new technology, typically analytics that are cloud-based, building on top of this automation layer, we know we can get even further. So we've deployed in many buildings this kind of offers, and we show that we can actually reduce the number of human interventions, you know, service and maintenance interventions, by 60 to 80%, thanks to that. But we can also save an incremental 15 to 20% of energy on buildings that were already equipped with best-in-class automation systems. So that's really where you see we can raise the bar with digital. When it comes to sustainability, I'll just tell you that our vision is long-term buildings will be an energy generation asset. Yes, an energy consumption asset, but also an energy generation asset. You can imagine that in many buildings, there's going to be a microgrid. Here you see the Schneider headquarters in the Paris area. 2,000 people, 35,000 square meters. This is a building where we could divide by three the net energy consumption per square meter thanks to active energy management on HVAC, lighting, refrigeration, and thanks to microgrids typically PVRS on the roof, and also geothermal. Two-thirds of the gain was with active energy management, one-third with renewable generation. This is the future. We have many other examples. You might have seen the video of Lidl uh, a bit earlier that is also equipped with a microgrid. Finally, we want mass adoption. Now, the good thing with this new technology is they are making the life of our partners in the industry Simpler, easier software integration, easier and more simple programming language or standards, mobile capabilities for commissioning, 
wireless technology. All of that is actually contributing to making this technology easier to implement, which is very important for us to impact the full market. So remember, three very important things, more engaging buildings, hyper-efficient buildings, sustainable buildings is what we're going to try to achieve. And I'd like to turn to actually an actual experimentation that has been done by, uh, by CBRE using technology. So CBRE is actually a leader in commercial real estate services. Property management, property lease and sale. It's actually the largest commercial real estate developer in the US. Uh, CBRE is also a partner of Schneider Electric, and, and you see that they use a lot of our technology bricks. Um, but really today, what is interesting is CBRE actually has a convergent vision with ours when it comes to using digital to make buildings more engaging and also more sustainable. And I'd like to turn to Gert so that he can share with us the journey that CBRE has embarked on to reinvent buildings in their own way. So Gert. Thank you. Good morning. So, can you hear me? Sure, yeah. My name is Geert. <laughs> so it's very difficult to pronounce. It's Dutch. We can also do it in Dutch. Spreken jullie allemaal Nederlands? Eh? <laughs> One, two. No, let's do it in, in, in English and it will be translated. Goedemorgen. It's, a, goedemorgen, it's a good morning because Ajax Amsterdam won yesterday against Valencia, 3-0. <laughs> so it was a little bit late yesterday night, but uh, we woke up very happily. So, what I would like to show you and would like to share with you is the, the road we took in Amsterdam to our new office building. And um, we have a vision about uh, real estate and about, especially about uh, offices. Because we think our mission is, our vision is every place to work should be, have a, should be a source of competitive advantage. So it's all about productivity, it's all about health, it's about happiness, it's about uh, efficiency, sustainability, because this is the place where we spend most of our time. And when I look to many boring buildings, there's a lot of work to do. Um, and we also always say in CBRE, because we are quite a large firm, I think we have around about 250,000 people working for us. I don't know what they're doing, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's large. And I try to get now this one. This was our first stop because what we uh, tried to achieve in 2011, we had two offices, one in Almere, which is more or less the countryside. Uh, and we had an office in Amsterdam. We had an office in Almere for the hardworking consultants and project managers, and a, a nice large office in Amsterdam for the brokers. That was the difference. And we said that we have to bring them together because it's to, to, to deliver a good building is not about only about the real estate, uh, not, not only about the location and uh, about uh, how it looks and the price, but it's also about what you would like to do in it. And you have uh, a, a good footprint to achieve what you would like to do. So that was our first journey to a new way of working within CBRE worldwide, because we were the first. Because we need to innovate, because we are just quite small country, quite small, very small. We have a lot of people, 17 million, or in a land which is only, I think, 8% of the, of the size of Germany. And we don't have uh, a lot of oil. We have some. We used all our gas, so it's all gone. Uh, and we have to trade. We don't produce. So we need to innovate and we need to, to, to be very efficient and uh, to perform well. Um, so um, to bring them together, um, uh, was a goal for us, and also we needed to have more space. So we went to the South X. South X, the financial district of Amsterdam, and uh, we went there with a total group of roundabouts at that time, 250 people, 
And uh, what did we achieve over there? This one was a very sustainable office environment. It was a very modern building, uh, uh, low energy, um, uh, but also um, we created an office, uh, a concept which was also very sustainable. Because what we did, we disconnect the workplace from the people. And we introduced activity-based working. So nobody had their own desk or their own room. Everything was shared. So we could work with around about 70% of the normal workspaces. So, and also, when you grow, it's very easy because the workplace is not connected to the people. So at the moment you have more people, your density gets a little bit higher, but you don't have to change anything. So that is really sustainable. Another thing was the focus on the internal communication. Because especially the brokers need to know what, a, what the client needs for their building because they, before they start the search. And also, uh, in the whole way of uh, creating a building, because we also do the design and project management, uh, people need to work closely together to work integrated. So we like to make a lot of holes in building to make the communication uh, good. So no internal staircases, but make it open. Not all building owners are very happy with that, but they pay rent for it. The other thing was is very important was the activity-based working. So at the moment you come in the office, you don't go to your desk, so you don't have to sit opposite the guy you don't like at all. So you can go somewhere else. Or when, when he's talking about football in the morning all the time, then you can sit somebody somewhere else. But also when you need to have a conference call or you have a meeting, you can go where you, where you would like to do this. Activity-based working. So that was 2012. Was it a smart building? Yeah, we, we did some very smart things. So we had a tech, and with that tech you can go to the copy machine and you can put it there. And, and then the, the paper comes out. And also what we had is a booking system where you go to a meeting room that your name was there. Very smart. That was, that was it. So from there, our second stop was our headquarters in uh, Los Angeles. Because when we opened the office, everybody said, there's ha happening something in Amsterdam. There was one guy who said, okay, I'm going to Amsterdam and I'm going to see what they do. So they went to Amsterdam and they said, okay, you have to help us. We are working already for three years on a new office concept with a famous designer, but we don't succeed, we don't know what to do. So we helped them, we sent a team to LA and we also introduced the activity-based working over there. Um, and um, it is a beautiful building. And also the, the difference was that also the activity-based working, also collaboration with the teams, making it more open and transparent, was really, really successful. And it is an award-winning project in LA. And our CEO, Bob Selentic, he always says, it all started in LA with some help from Amsterdam. So this was the office in, uh, in, uh, in LA. So we also did some minor smart things in the building, but it, it was not there yet. So we had some things with QR codes and these kind of things, but nothing very special. Okay, then I take you to, to 2015. What we experienced last year is that these wor the world is changing very rapidly. We have grown from 250 people to 550 people between 2012 and 2018. So we needed to th rethink the office, but also to have all these people on a very expensive place on the South X is also not very smart. Um, but also the people we have, they don't want to, to, to work in a boring building. So they would like to be uh, more in an expiring uh, surrounding and not uh, in, in a very traditional office. Uh, but all these things, and we would like to innovate because we are small, uh, we always try to be the thought leader in, on the industry, so we would like to innovate. So what did we do? We went to a building, and that is an old garage, finally. It took us two years to find it and to contract it. But we are a very corporate real estate organization, very corporate. And this is our Amsterdam headquarters. It is an old garage of Peugeot. Um, you know Peugeot, of course. 
Um, and we, we, we had a program of requirements. One was, they need to be the best place to co-create. Because what we, what we experienced, we can't do it by ourselves. We need to have partners to work with. And we need to, 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 to create a place where also they, they could meet us and they could work with us. Um, the whole work style working was introduced, so it's not activity-based anymore, but we translate it in a more agile way of working. Um, the other thing is what is very important for us is that the interaction with our clients needs to become stronger. So in the, in the past, you go to a client, you will present something, and he says, yeah, this is good and that not. You go back, you start working again. Two weeks later, you go back to him. Very inefficient. So he said, we would like to be more in co-creation with our clients. So we created client labs. So we can invite our clients, and we spend 84 hours with them. Yeah, we sleep in, in between. <laughs> and we cook at, uh, at night with them. And we try in 48 hours, we try to make the program of their new office. And not only about space and work styles, but also about budget and schedule, but also what we would like to achieve with the people. So we do that in 48 hours. So that is a major saving in, in, in time, but also in money. Um, the whole thing about partnering is very important for us. Because, yeah, we are advisors, and you know advisors, they know everything better. They think they know everything better, but they don't. And also, we have to learn from the industry, because there are so many experts with the industry we would like to, to share knowledge with, and they can contribute to the, to the projects we make. The other thing is well-being. Water is also very important for well-being. So we did um, research with the University of Amsterdam how you can influence the well-being of people to make them more productive. And we really tested it because everybody says it is like that, that you can uh, have more uh, uh, production, but you have to prove it. So we did that with a group of 150 people, reference group of 75 and a test group of 75. So, and during, I think, Nine months we tested it, and the results are really amazing. When you influence on uh, water, about uh, food, when you uh, about movement, about uh, acoustics, about light, you can gain around about 15% of productivity. So people get more uh, productive for 15% when you do everything. When you do the half, it's probably a little bit less. But that is very important. But also our workers. They need to work, they, they would like to work healthy. So that was very important. So we have a well platinum standard. I don't know if you know the well institute, but this is quite high. Um, also, we put a lot of plants in the building. Uh, also, the, 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 these, these plants are special for purifying. Not only look nice, green is really a very good color, eh? make people very happy, uh, but plants uh, even more, green plants. Uh, we introduced circadian lighting, so that will follow your uh, biorhythm. You can manipulate with that, but that's not very smart, but that's really good that people get more happy. We introduced e-bikes for mobility, so nobody can have to come with the, to the office by, by, by car. Uh, they can, we also have electric charging, but also we have an electric bike system where you go to the uh, to the uh, train station that you can reserve a, a bike and you can go to the office. And very healthy food and beverage, because also food and beverage influences, especially just after lunch, your productivity. Sustainability, of course. Uh, we all talk about sustainability. It needs to be su sustainable anyway, so we are lead gold, which is quite good for an old building. It, it is all electric, so we don't have any gas anymore. That's really good. We don't have gas anymore in Holland, so that is really smart to do that. We did a lot of reuse of materials. Uh, also, because materials which were in the building and were available in the old buildings, we took with us. And also, we, we gained some uh, the old um, uh, uniforms from the KLM uh, stewardesses were put in, in, uh, in materials. And um, also, we only, use we only cater with local products so they don't have to fly it in. The other thing is smart, because what we did with Snyder, we put 700 sensors in the building. 
which is really a lot. Is it too much? I think it's too much. <laughs> but when you do it and you don't know what you're going to do with it, so you have to put some more in. And we got a, we got a good deal that also, for Dutch also very important that we make a very good deal. Um, and what we do is that we measure all kinds of things, energy use. We, 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 we can do anything with it, but also it was the, the first really experience, uh, the first test case. So uh, uh, there are so many things to do with it and the infrastructure is there. Um, so, and the results after uh, two years of negotiating and designing and implementing it's quite amazing. This is the building now. And it, is not, it doesn't look like a corporate office at all. So this is the, the old showroom. There we have a place where we can co-create and we can co-work with our customers and our partners. Uh, we have two different offices, one for the quiet workers and one for the noisy workers. So the consultants are with the quiet workers and the brokers are all in the noisy part. But it's good to have all these kind of, of uh, possibilities. So we have uh, meeting rooms, stand-up meeting rooms. We have agile tables. And we have all kinds of, of things. And it's the nice thing when you look to the building is that you still see that is, yeah, you experience that it's still a, a, a garage. And that's also what we, had, what we would like to do with the building. One of the, th the, the messages was that we would like to create a building for 10 years, move out over 10 years, and then the building is still in very good shape. So somebody can use it even again for a showroom, for a, gar a garage. Um, what do we do with the digital change? Smart, we made it smart and it's just, uh, we are really in the beginning because we just implemented it. But what do we have? We have mobile ambient control. So you can interfere with lighting and with temperature. Not in the open spots, that's not, not so smart, but especially in the, in the rooms. Uh, from your app, we, ha we created an app for the, for the building. Uh, you can share uh, your location and uh, your fi find your colleagues. Um, you can book and, uh, uh, your spaces, but also at the moment you have a no-show, uh, it's free after five, uh, five minutes. And what also helps at the moment you book a space and you don't use it, you get the bill. It's very good for the Dutch people because they, they are very, uh, it's always about money. Um, also, we uh, put the, com the, 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 the company news on it. So we ha also have intranet and, and, and books and bulletins and mails, but now everything is on the app. Um, you have easy access to facilities because that is very important at the moment. You have a, 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 a very flexible office. People, we have a lot of facilities, but you have to find them. And how do you find them? Yeah, you get, we can put hosts everywhere to, to tell the people, but it's also quite inefficient. Uh, so that's easy to also to share with the, uh, the digital platform. Uh, we measure occupancy. So we know how the building is in use. Uh, every month we check what happens, what the results are, and we adjust the setting of the office. So when you have a location that's only in use for 5% five, five of the time, it's then you have to do something with it because it's, it's not very, uh, very well designed for our purpose. And also we can easily see at the moment the, the, the density gets too high, so we have to do things with it. We have the um, uh, smart electric car charging, which is uh, um, at the moment you put power on all the, uh, all the machines, you need an extra um, uh, transformator. So now we have the smart system, which is presented also here. Um, and we can reserve parking spaces because we, we have very limited uh, parking spaces and also we, we build them to the diff different business units so it's easy then to invoice that. And uh, we, ha we have the uh, energy optimi optimi optimization. So um, also, for instance, what we do with lighting, normally f according to the regulations in Holland, but I think internationally you need 500 lux but you don't need 500 lux all the time. So normally you need maybe 300 lux. So we put the lighting on 300 lux. At the moment I'm sitting here and I would like to, to work with a, with a higher uh, uh, light volume. I can just put it on 500 lux for 15 minutes 
and then it drops down to 300 lux. We save around about 35% of energy on lighting. These kind of things are only possible at the moment you make your building smart. Almost there. <laughs> so, and how smart is it? Huh? What, what, what is good to, uh, about smart? And we are really in the beginning. We put everything in the building. We have some things, but this is just the beginning. But it's really about, it's about sustainability. You can be, be far more sustainable at the moment you have the smart technology in your building. In the summer period, you can um, put a part of the, close your part of your building. So put the energy off, put the lighting off, uh, don't clean it anymore. Fair, you can do that at the, at, the moment, at, at the moment you have these measurements. Save on food and waste. So at the moment we, we collect the data and we can predict. So we know on the third Tuesday of September next year, we only have 60% of the people having lunch in our office. So we, we buy for 63% of the people and then we save a lot of waste. We save, save a lot of food. Also about facilities, you can use your facilities much better. It's easy access and easy to, to present and to share. Work healthier, which is a big thing in the future. We know for companies in the Netherlands that some people, young people, don't want to work in a not healthy environment and also don't want to work for a not a sustainable company. And uh, so that's very, uh, very uh, important. Also save money on real estate. We, we, we saved around about 20% on, on, on our real estate pricing, on our cost. Um, and also be a better host, especially when you make an office flexible and you, you, people need to know where they can find somebody and services and these kind of things. So um, we, we have it all in Amsterdam and I would like to invite you, if you would like to come to our office, we can show you around. The most important thing for us is this is this is the where we are at this moment on our journey but we are not there yet we will continue in the future thank you thank you again thank you thank you again. Qu quite a, quite an impressive uh, journey and uh, very happy to have contributed on the technology side to this transformation. I think it's, uh, it's quite an inspiration to see how much you can transform again the experience that people have in the building. We've we were talking about more engaging buildings, sustainable buildings, and hyper-efficient buildings. Our way to really scale up on our side is eco-structure. We're actually proposing a toolbox for people who have projects of transformation of their buildings and real estate to actually realize that, especially on the digital side. So when we have a look at eco-structure, we are actually going with the principles we were talking about, i.e. putting in place a data highway with all the capture of the data in the building, the right sensors, all that leverages open protocols, IP architecture, cyber secure. Then we bring all of the data to the right computing and visualization module with edge control, where we also create the bridges with the other OT systems of buildings. That's where for us the fact that it is an open platform is fundamental, because then you can build on it. You can create your own app on top of it, but the data and the bridges now exist to do that. And we have our own set of enterprise apps and analytics that you can see on, uh, on the hub over there. Um, and, and when it comes to, I would say, the full picture, what is really important is that you can consume some of these products in an independent manner. You know, you can buy the connected products, you can buy the apps and analytics, and then if you really want to have a superior experience, you can actually take the full system. Okay, but it's an open innovation platform so that you can build on it. That's really the approach. Rebecca Ball is actually going to give an expert session in Theater 2 in a few minutes about it. We're very proud of EcoStructure. It's been recognized as the best platform in the industry by industry analysts, Navigant and Verdantix. And even more in terms of, of pride, comes the implementation by our partners and customers. So you've seen an example with the core, 
There are other examples like Les Dunes in Paris, which is really interesting when it comes to an engaging place. That's where they've used this uh, engage app-like technology in order to uh, create excitement with their millennial employees. You can have a look at hospitals where we've actually created single pane of glasses for the nurses' crews who are then more happy with, uh, with their job because they feel less stress. So you see a number of implementations that are really transforming the buildings and the experience of people in buildings. We'll stop there, but if you want to learn more, there's the innovation over, over there, especially the commercial and office building part. So I wish you a, a good exploration there. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.